GenKit is a framework designed to help you build AI-powered apps and features. It provides open source SDKs for interacting with AI models, plus developer tools for testing and debugging. In this video, you will learn how to install and use GenKit for Node.js to build AI features for your apps in minutes. You can use GenKit in any environment that supports Node.js. To keep things simple for this introduction, I've created a new project using npm init. To add GenKit to your app, install it using your favorite package manager. In addition to the core package, I recommend installing the Google AI package to get access to the Gemini family of models. Once the packages are installed, you can import them into your code and then create a GenKit instance. This code snippet here creates a new GenKit instance, configures it with the Google AI plugin and sets Gemini as the default model. You can now use this GenKit instance to make calls, for example, to generate text using the generate method. Before I can run this app, I need to set my API key since I'm using the Gemini API. I can now run the app from my terminal using this command, which compiles and executes my code in one step. Again, keep in mind that you can use GenKit in any environment that supports Node.js. The reason why I'm using a command line utility is to keep it simple for this video. And here is the model's response. So with just a few lines of code, we were able to prompt an LLM and generate text, but the generate method is a lot more powerful. It provides a unified interface for any LLM that is supported by GenKit, and you can use it to generate text, media, and structured output like JSON. It also supports multimodal input and, of course, streaming and more advanced techniques such as tool calling. Let me show you how you can use these features in your app. For example, thanks to GenKit's Unified Generation API, you can use different models without having to learn their individual APIs. All you have to do is install the respective model plugin from NPM, import it into your code, add it to the list of GenKit plugins, and configure it. Then you can set the default model when creating your GenKit instance. Whenever you use GenKit's generate method, it will use this default model to perform your request. And if you'd like to use a different model for some of the calls in your app, you can do that too. This might be useful if you want to use a model with specific capabilities for some parts of your app, but not for others. For example, in this code snippet, we're going to use a different model for a call that generates a description of what can be seen in an image. This is called multimodal input, and it is supported by many models. We will first install and import the model, then specify the model parameter on the generate call. GenKit also makes it easy to generate structured content. This is really useful when analyzing unstructured data, for example, to describe what can be seen in an image. Let's first define a schema for our data structure. GenKit will use the schema for a couple of things. First, it will use the schema to augment the prompt it sends to the model. This will help the model generate output in the expected format. The schema also helps TypeScript to statically verify that the input parameters and return values of your flows are type safe. Using structured output is a good idea when you need to process the result of a call in your app, for example, when displaying a list of ingredients in a cooking app. So far, we've used the generate method to generate text, but you can also use GenKit with image generation models. In this code snippet, I use imagine to generate an image of a meal you can cook with the ingredients 
on the image we just analyzed. There is also a streaming version of the generate method, which helps to create a better user experience for lengthy responses. You can use a for loop to iterate over the chunks of the stream as they get sent back by the model. Alternatively, you can await the response and then get the final result. Let's run this from the command line to see how the response is streamed. Nice. So even though this is a pretty lengthy block of text, the user can easily read along. And that's JanKids Unified Generation API. It makes working with different models and even different types of input and output easier by providing a unified API that doesn't require you to learn how to invoke the different models. One call to rule them all. Of course, there is a lot more to building great AI features than just generating text or images. For example, you might need to fetch data from a database, retrieve the history of a user's current session, or combine the output of several models. This is where GenKit flows come in. At first glance, they might look like regular functions, but they have some properties that make them special. For example, you can specify input and output schemas using Zord, which allows GenKit to perform static and runtime checking. Flows also integrate well with GenKit's developer UI, giving you a user-friendly and efficient way to interact with your AI features during development. GenKit flows can also be deployed as web API endpoints, for example, using Cloud Functions for Firebase, Cloud Run, or any other platform that can host Node.js apps. Let's convert one of the previous code snippets to a GenKit flow. You define GenKit flows using the define flow function. Flows have a name, which will show up in the developer UI as well as in the log output. It's best practice to define both input and output schemas. This flow here expects the string as its input, and it will return an object containing a cooking recipe. Notice how I'm able to reuse the schema I defined earlier. Each flow has an asynchronous function that will be executed when the flow is run. In this example, I just take the input and call the generate method, but you can do anything you like inside a flow. For example, you can retrieve data from a database to augment your prompts. You can also call other flows from inside a flow, allowing you to compose multi-step pipelines. For example, imagine building a recipe recommendation app based on uploaded images. This could be decomposed into a pipeline of GenKit flows. One flow to analyze image ingredients, another to generate a recipe based on the analysis, and a third to create a visual representation of the completed recipe. Once we've defined these individual flows, we can combine them into a new flow that calls them sequentially, passing data between them and ultimately returning a result object that your app can use. We're now ready to run our flows in GenKit's developer UI, but we first need to install the CLI. Once the installation has finished, we can run the GenKit developer UI like this and then launch the app. I can now go ahead and open the GenKit developer UI in my browser by clicking on this link here. So we can see that there are four flows. And if I click on this first flow here, I can provide the name of an image as the input. When I tap the Run button or press Command Enter, GenKit will run the flow, and after a brief moment, we see the model's response. By clicking on the View Trace button, we can inspect this trace in the Trace Inspector. On the left, we've got all the different parts of the flow, and we can click through to inspect all of the individual steps to see their input and output, and a bunch of other details about this invocation. Okay, so this was a single flow, 
Let's see how things change when I run a slightly more complex flow, like this one here, the personal chef flow. So when I run this, it takes slightly more time because we're making several calls to different models and each call depends on the output of the previous one. And here's the result. This looks like a delicious recipe. Let's inspect the trace. All right, so we can see the call to the personal chef flow and inside there are the child flows we're calling as well as the time each of them took to complete. Clicking through each of those steps allows us to see exactly the input and output. This is super useful when you need to debug your AI flows. So you now know about the fundamentals of content generation. To learn more about advanced concepts such as tool calling, retrieval augmented generation, and agents, check out the GenKit playlist on our YouTube channel. Now that you know what GenKit flows are, you might be wondering how you can use them in your mobile or web apps. You can deploy GenKit flows to any platform that can serve Node.js apps, whether it's a cloud service or self-hosted. Let's take a look at how you would deploy an app with a couple of GenKit flows to Firebase and how you can call them from your mobile and web apps. First, if you haven't already, you need to initialize a Firebase project in a local directory. If you already have a Firebase project, you can add GenKit to it using npm install, just as I showed you in the beginning of this video. Next, you need to make your GenKit flows callable. The cloud functions for Firebase SDK has native support for this. The most basic form to make a GenKit flow callable is to wrap it with the onCallGenKit function. OnCallGenKit automatically supports streaming and JSON requests. For example, to wrap the personal chef flow we worked on earlier in this video, all you need to do is add this one line here. But wait, you should make sure your flows are secure and can only be called by authorized users of your app. To achieve this, add the following options to the call. First, you should provide an authorization policy to make sure only signed-in users of your app can call your flows. The Firebase Functions SDK provides a convenient helper function for this. You can also implement a custom authorization policy if you need something more complex. Next, you should make sure that only your genuine apps can call your GenKit flows. This protects against malicious actors who might tamper with your binaries. On call GenKit integrates with Firebase AppCheck, and you can enable this by adding the enforce AppCheck parameter. To protect against replay attacks, at the consume AppCheck token parameter. To learn more about AppCheck and how to enable it in your client apps, check out the Firebase documentation. And finally, you can use the secrets parameter to pass any secrets like the API keys for the LLMs you might be using in your flows. A convenient way to do this is to use the define secret function provided by the Firebase Functions SDK. This will automatically set up the secret for you during deployment. And that's it. You can now deploy your GenKit flows to Firebase using the Firebase deploy command. Your GenKit flows can then be called like any other callable cloud function. Here are some code snippets that show how you can do this from mobile and web apps. Once your app is in production, Understanding the performance and behavior of features built with LLMs is critical to the success of your app. How many tokens do your AI features consume? What's the latency of accessing the database in a rag flow? How many of your LLM calls fail? We've built production monitoring that you can access in the Firebase console, allowing you to see all the important vitals of your GenKit features and even inspect production traces of your app. 
Traces can also be exported and used for evaluations directly in GenQ to help iterate and improve your features. All of this allows you to operate high quality, safe and efficient Gen AI features in production. To enable telemetry for your GenKit flows and other actions, add the following lines to your source and redeploy. The next time you call your deployed GenKit flows, telemetry data will be collected. To see a high level overview of the GenKit flows deployed in your Firebase project, visit the Firebase console. At the top, you will see the vitals of your GenKit flows, such as the number of requests, the success rate, and the latency. At the bottom of the screen, you can see a list of all the deployed GenKit flows of your project. You can drill into individual flows to see more details. Most importantly, how many tokens or images they consumed or produced. But there is more. You can see the input and output parameters. And when you click on an invocation, you can see the entire trace of your flow. With the Trace Inspector, you can examine every step of a flow invocation in detail. It reveals the input and output of each step, along with any associated attributes. This allows for a granular understanding of the flow's execution process. This is a really valuable tool to help you gain insight into the performance of your AI features in production, and it's a great help when optimizing or debugging your GenKit flows. You can also inspect any invocations that fail, like this one. This is a great help for understanding why some of your invocations might have failed. In my case, it looks like I might need to implement better error handling when loading images. All of this is possible because GenKit flows and all of their underlying actions are observable. You don't have to add any additional instrumentation. It's all built in. That's it. You now know the basics of GenKit. If you want to learn more, we've got a bunch of resources for you. For those of you who'd like to get some hands-on experience, we've created some code labs. These are hands-on tutorials, and you can find them right here in our documentation. Also, we've got a bunch of videos in the queue that cover Jenkins advanced concepts like tool calling, reg, building multi-agent systems, and more. I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way, you won't miss out when we post new content. GenKit is an open source project. And if you're interested in contributing, head on over to our repository on GitHub, where you can check out the source code, file feature requests, and bug reports. And if you'd like to get in touch with the team, join us on our Discord server. Now, start generating and build some great apps with GenKit. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.